Hey everybody, it's Jay, and today I have something that's another revolver. Go figure. Yeah, it's been real revolver around here lately. I've said that a few times, and we'll probably say it at least a few more times over the next uh, year or so, because for whatever reason, I've got it into my head to start kind of doing a small revolver collection, picking them up here and there. And a lot of it is because, really, I've been shooting a lot in 38 and 357. This one that you're seeing here is in 38 Special. I really find them really fun to shoot, to be honest, and it is a skill set that I've had to really, really develop over the last couple of months that I've been shooting revolvers a lot, because it is not a skill set that I had at all. Um, I am not a revolver guy. I'm very fairly new to purchasing revolvers. So I feel like I needed, felt like I needed to add, in addition to my Smith & Wesson 627, an older Smith & Wesson Model 10. The Model 10 is chambered. In 38 Special, as I mentioned before, features a six round cylinder, these very traditional old school square butt grips, fixed sights milled into the top, fixed in the front, and mostly the rest of the typical accoutrement. Now, this particular Smith & Wesson, which is a Jordanian police surplus trade-in. And as you can see from the video that you're watching, because that's how you would be seeing it right now, unless you're Misha, you'd be listening to it. This thing is real worn. It has seen some crap. And not a lot of blue left. I mean, really, it's not that. I've definitely seen. I mean, I've got a VZ24 in there that looks way worse than this as far as finish left. But uh, you can see a lot of the wear marks on it. A lot of that finish gone and this, all these scratches all over it. Now, there's no rust. There's definitely some patina, we'll say, especially along the back straps. And you can definitely see where the grips have gotten chewed up. And there is the Jordanian proof mark underneath, has the unit number. And it stands for a real long phrase that I don't know off the top of my head. Sorry about that. You can go check it out. One thing though, uh, is the trigger is super nice. It is unbelievably light. Um... I mentioned previously that my Model 627, you can probably hear my stomach growling, sorry about that. My 627, the double action weighed the trigger scale that I have that's limited to 10 pounds. The double action on this gun is nine pounds. So it's actually considerably better than my 627 Performance Center. So I don't know if that is typical of older Smith & Wessons, if the triggers were just really good, or if that's something that's unique to this. Maybe they had action jobs done on these for the Jordanian police, or whoever had them before they ended up at the Jordanian police. But the single action and the double action are unbelievably light. And because of that, I'm actually really accurate with this revolver, both in double action and single action, right out of the box which, you know, out of the box being whatever shipping container I got this in, because the box is long gone. I've been really accurate with this gun, and uh, it's a lot of fun to shoot because of that. Um, it's, in addition to having the kind of old school cool feel of this, you know, the square butt grips, which honestly don't fit my hand great. Definitely my 627 fits me better. It, that, uh, that element, the kind of, it just, there's something about this that reminds me of old detective movies and, you know, uh, film noir that I think is really cool and adds a little bit to how much fun this really is to shoot. So I'm not sure how many of these were imported. I believe these have Century import marks on them. Of course, made in the U.S. Ended up in Jordan at some point. Yeah, these are these have Century import marks on the butt. See there. So I have no idea how many of these 
that were imported, what the availability is going to be like by the time you see this video. But um, yeah, I, I paid I think two ninety for it before shipping, so not super expensive for a revolver in any way, in my opinion. Now shows a lot of wear, but honestly, I think the wear is kind of attractive. There's something about older guns like this that show a lot of uh, honest wear. If it was a rust bucket, I'd feel one way about it, but just being really honest, hard use wear, it, uh, I think it looks good, personally. I kind of like it. The lockup on this one is real good. Um, the seller who I bought this from had really good descriptions, um, test fire and on the lockup on the cylinder and all that stuff. So I felt pretty confident buying from them and I have bought from them before. Misha and I both have um, some other surplus guns. The dog's in there barking for food. And the lockup is good on this. It's not factory new lockup, but it's good. It's perfectly safe to fire. And uh, it has been 100%. I've only put about 50 rounds through it so far and had no issues. But uh, I'll definitely be shooting it some more because it is it's just that kind of that old school cool. So we've done some other videos on the history of these types of guns. So go check out our revolvers playlist. This is Jay. Hope you liked this video. Please click like if you did. Be sure to go check out our channel and subscribe to us if you haven't already. And check out the link to our Patreon page if you're interested in helping support us. And we will see you again soon next time.